So how about if we just go around, introduce ourselves and our roles, uh, and I'll start, Darren Campbell, uh, chair of the Private Higher Transportation Advisory Committee, and I am also the company representative representing Radio Cab, the taxi company representative Radio Cab. Uh, Phil, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Phil Berger. I'm a Lyft and Uber driver, and I'm also on the Peabody Driver Advisory Committee. Excellent. Mr. Mark? Dan Mark, Mark Car Service. Um, I'm the LPT advisor, I guess. Perfect. Um, Gabby and Cameron, do you want to introduce yourselves? I don't know. If, Gabby, are you even taking part? You know, there's no video. You're just yeah. sitting there in the corner. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Gabby. Um, I work with PBOT, the regulatory program. I do most of the customer service representative stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And she's okay. really good at it. Uh, Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Camarina Galvan, and I am the note taker. And I also support Tracy uh, Smith, who's usually our facilitator, but had a conflict today. So I'm subbing in for her. Perfect. And then we have uh, Miss Kate. You want to introduce yourself and and uh, tell us tell us what's going on? Um, hi. I'm Kate Williams. I um, am the government relations officer for Care Pool, and we are an independent mobility on demand company. And we are looking to start doing business in Oregon. And so I thought I'd just drop in and listen for a little while. Cool. You'll be bored, completely bored, I tell you. Welcome. No. But thank you. Thank you for stepping in and taking part in, in uh, auditing our lovely meeting here. <laughs> okay. Mostly I'll oh. be quiet. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Uh, so, um, Camarina, can you tell us what, what uh, is first up on our agenda? Sorry. Uh, yes. So, first. Order of action is um, our to review the action items. Here, let me admit Guy. So I will share my screen and I will, um, we can take a look at those. So action item 13 from our last meeting was that Mark was gonna find out what state or city, um, he provided an example of a place where um, they, uh, where they were, they were not allowing drivers to get on the app to be able to control the number of drivers that were um, being able to work at them in a specific time or moment when there was like a lag in ride requests. Um, so he, this is what he shared. He said, this did happen in New York in response to the utilization rate mechanism. It incentivizes the companies to keep drivers busy in P2 and P3 and minimize P1. So in theory, they are incentivized to limit drivers from going on the app if there is not sufficient rider demand at a particular time. And so he's not here to answer questions of folks. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm thinking that maybe we come in with Mr. Williams, we come back around when he mm -hmm. jumps in. How about that? Sounds great. For action item 14, um, Darren was going to work on the language for the two cards, one for passengers and one for drivers inviting to attend the committee meetings. Um, I, I sent Mark a very, very, very rough draft of that. Great. Thanks, Darren. Um, Okay, and the next one was that Darren was gonna send this to Mark and then Mark was gonna send it to the communication team for review. So we, it's now in Mark's court. And then for action item 16, um, 
Bill was going to continue developing the survey, um, which he did, and those are in the uh, those are documents that are attached to the meeting invite. And you should have those, um, and I can also put them on the screen. Yeah, if you can put those on the screen, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were two things, right? One was the email that sort of invited people to provide feedback and help brainstorm. And then the second document um, were all the questions, including the opt-in questions, which made it look very long. And um, before you dive in, uh, Guy, do you want to quickly introduce yourself to the committee? Yes, hi. Uh, apologize for my lateness on this. I was actually in another meeting. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Guy Ocker. I am a Lyft driver. Um, I'm signed up for the Uber app, but I mainly um, always drive for Lyft now, and I've been doing this for seven years. Perfect. Thank you. Bill. <sighs> oh, boy. So um, I should really start by just asking, did everyone get a chance to, to read through both of these documents? It's okay to say no if you haven't, because they're long. I did. Dan, Guy, did you guys? Um, I have, I, I have not, no. Um, well, we can go through this. Uh, Camarena, do you want to throw it up on the screen and then? You um, know, Phil, was this, was this the document that was sent way back? You were like, not at the last meeting and something that we're supposed to review? Yes, there was okay. a, was, there was a previous so, version and then there was a revised version. Yeah. Okay. I, I did not see the revised version, but I saw the original. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, Marina, did Chad happen to make any uh, additions on this? Do you know? Um, I rec my recollection is that he responded via email at some point, at some point in the revision. Um, or in one of the yeah, versions. He, he had a couple of comments. I don't mm -hmm. specifically remember, but one of them had to do with the initial driver demographic section that we'll get to first. And I think he just said something about it not being important to get their age. And I think he made a comment also about he didn't think it was important um, where they were from, like what county or what state. So I don't feel particularly strongly about either of those. I think I left one of them in and took the other out. Um, and then I think you also just had a general comment that shorter is better than longer. You know, and my response to that is really what I was gonna start off with in general. And that is before we really get into talking about each, <laughs> each of these questions, we really should be in agreement on what it is we're trying to accomplish, um, you know, big picture, um, before we really start breaking it apart. So maybe- yeah, I agree, I, I agree exactly. What are we trying to accomplish with this? I agree with that. Okay, so <laughs> so in the, in the email, it, it it states the five things that we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so Darren, should I go through them again or go, should we just- Go for it. Or should I we mean, just put up the, yeah. the email? I will put up the email. So there, there are the five, you know, why don't we just give everyone a, a minute or two to to read as much of this as they can in a minute or two. So what does this mean? Um, transparency of the distribution of rider fare calculations and fairness of the distribution of each ride. What do you, what do you mean by that? The trans, so number three, 
the transparency of the, so it's looking at number one and looking at number two. And then is it clear to both the riders and or the drivers how the, fare, how the fares are distributed between the TNCs and the drivers? So in other words, I, I've asked my riders, do you have any idea how much the driver gets from what you're paying? And they've said no. And as a driver, you know that you don't know what a rider is paying. So we have no way of calculating what percentage or what portion of the fares that are collected are going to the drivers. This is, this is in comparison to the way it used to be where the drivers got X percent and that's no longer happening. So what this will show is if the drivers think they know something that they don't. Hmm. Well, the follow-up question to the customer would be, do you know what the driver's getting paid and do you care? I think that's a real important question. I think most they care. Don't care. No, I think they do. I mean, you, you can say that they don't, but I've had hundreds of conversations with riders and when it comes up, they all would wanna know. They like the drivers and they don't like the companies. The fact that the riders don't have transparency and they have no idea why, how they're getting charged, right? There's not a tariff system like there is for other modes of transportation, right? When, when I got into a yellow cab in New York City, right? As soon as I got in, I knew how much I was being charged per minute, per mile, and for the pickup. And when a rider gets offered a ride now, they just know that they're paying $11. They have no idea what that's based on. It used to be based on something, on a minute, mile, and pickup charge, and it no longer is. And as rates go up, in my experience, they're getting very angry that it's getting so expensive. And they know that the drivers aren't getting increased rates, right? We're getting paid per minute, per mile, and a pickup fee that was fixed five years ago or four years ago, and it hasn't gone up. So this, this is a way of just asking the drivers uh, if they're, if they're aware of how the, the rider fare is calculated, how driver compensation is, is whether they're right or wrong um, will be interesting to see, right? Because they're gonna answer, yes, I understand, or yes, I have a clear understanding, you know, but we sort of know ahead of time what the, whether some of these factors really affect it or not. And it's basically the same questions asked three different ways. So you'll see when we actually get to the questions, it's all the exact same factors listed three times. So um, I, I, I have a question here. Um, so, you know, we're gonna send this survey out to all, are, are we're gonna, are, when, when we send out this survey, are we gonna send it out to every single driver that's registered through the city of Portland? TNC driver, yeah. Okay, TNC driver. Um, and then, uh, well, it's gonna be interesting. I, I, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the results of this, but um, so let's say, um, you know, everyone's like, you know, no, I don't realize this and everything. And um, I mean, how, so then are we going to then tell Uber and Lyft, okay, we need to change and what are you gonna do about it? I mean, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm kind of asking is, is um, yeah. what authority are we gonna have to say, hey, you guys need to change the way you're doing things here. I mean- well, Thanks guy, I, that's, that's exactly what I was hoping we can talk about today before we actually get to the meat and potatoes. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, and basically be, <laughs> this is going to cover a whole lot of different topics. 
Mm-hmm. And and I, I, I think maybe before we, definitely before the survey goes out, it might be beneficial to the subcommittee to come up with one item um, that we would actually like to make a recommendation to, to the regular committee on just to try mm-hmm. to like get something through. Darren, maybe you can help me with this a little bit to come up with uh, one topic. I have a couple of ideas, but. Well, I, I've got a, I've got an idea, but um, let's, let's wait until we get through the, through the question part. Okay. Um, I want to treat that as, uh, I, I like your suggestion, but I think we need to treat that as a separate. Okay. Subject. All right. So, uh, so as, sense. all right. Thank you. Um, so as we start to go through this, um, I want to warn everybody, there's a lot, a lot of information in here. Um, and I don't, I don't think we should necessarily try to rush through the whole thing in a certain period of time. Maybe we, we decide ahead of time that we'll give it a certain number of minutes and we'll get, we'll get as far as we can, but giving each part due diligence, right? I, I don't think it's imperative that we finish this today, that we should definitely leave time for the other agenda items in the meeting. So what do you guys think of that? I agree with that. I agree. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and Guy, just to clarify a little bit too, in regards to what we're trying to get here, we're, try, we're really trying to put our finger on the pulse of what the what the attitudes and what the clarity is of TNC drivers across the city mm-hmm. um, and, and try and kind of see how important these things are to them. So that will direct our action a, a little bit, bit more. You know, if, okay. if we get a whole okay. bunch of, we just don't care, then that's gonna dictate to us that maybe we shouldn't either. But but if there's a whole lot of individuals that, that respond to this and respond, you know, in different directions, mm-hmm. then it's just, it's an information gathering piece to to help us move forward on, on some things. Okay. 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 So I, I want you guys to keep in mind the fact, a couple of things. One, uh, both you and Guy are the exception and not the rule uh, for your tenure doing this. Uh, as per the general manager from Uber, the, the life expectancy of an Uber driver in Portland is somewhere around 90 days. This is a blow off job. It's a job to get, to make some kind of income cash daily until you can find a a real job. And so when you start talking about doing surveys and sending them out, you know, if, if you take surveys six months later, most of the people that you surveyed have gone on to a different job. So that's an important question. You have to have some kind of, uh, uh, you have to be speedy here in whatever you want to do. And, you know, uh, I've been around Uber and Guy can tell you since 2015 and getting them to do anything is, you know, I mean, I can remember the tip button. What a big deal that was. That took years to get done. So you have a, 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 a hill to climb here. So and- I, I appreciate all those, those comments. And, and, and I, what I hear you saying is the way things are. And it's unlikely that we're going to get them to change. I'm saying streamline. What's that? I'm saying streamline. Streamline. Streamline the survey? Yes. Yeah, st- streamline it down so that you can get it get it out, get it to the people, get it to PBOT, get it to the city council, and do it in a timely fashion while you're still helping the guys that are here. That's all I'm saying. And, and you, I'm saying that you should probably pick uh, three of these things that you would like to have done or two of these things. Fair, you know, uh, I, I think what, what basically should happen is you guys should get paid more. They're taking way too much. They should limit the percentage that they should take. They should limit the amount of, of the surge that they can take. And so pretty much that would solve a lot of stuff right there. So let me, let me recommend this. I, I agree with much of what you're saying. The items that you think are most important that you just started to talk about, could you jot those down? 
and, yes. is, and, and issue them. Because what's going to happen, um, I, when I designed this survey, it's designed in such a way that it can be an extremely short, easy survey for someone to fill out, fill out who doesn't have a lot of time. And that every three questions at the end, there's three questions for each of these five topics. And then when you click on number three, it will ask you, and we'll see this as we go down. Um, would you like to answer more questions? And if they don't want to, they don't have to. But if they do click on it, a whole bunch of things will come up that will identify a whole bunch of things that they may or may not care about. And that'll provide important information. When the survey is designed, it needs to be easy to escape. If a person is ever getting tired and they don't want to answer those questions, there needs to be an escape button where they'll pop back out. But for now, I would recommend not necessarily, we haven't even gotten to them yet. So to eliminate things before we started. Um, also, I want to address the fact that you said just because the majority of the drivers last 90 days or less, that does not mean that there shouldn't be a group somewhere um, representing those that want to do this full time and long term. And that's Guy and, you know, Guy and myself. And, you know, you know, I, I don't think we should just give up on trying to make the system work for those that are here more than 90 days. It needs to be a fair system for those who choose to do this uh, for a living. Well, the, 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 the couple of things that I touched on, Phil, is the reason why everybody does this. And pretty much the one reason why everybody does this is money. And so that's what the problem is at this point, is the money. Okay, so we'll, we'll, taking, we'll get to that. They're taking too much money. And if you can fix that, if somehow you can get the city to limit how much they can take in a percentage wise, I, I, that, Dan, that Dan. would be perfect. I, I agree with you, and that is 100%. And you would help so many guys out there that are teetering on the edge and maybe doing this full time. So that's that's number four, Dan. And, yep. and numbers one, two, and three, transparency provides the, the information that we would be able to use to calculate the fairness. When we go through it, I think you'll see the flow. And, and I think you and I will be in very strong agreement. I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's take the next twenty-five minutes and start going through this, Phil. Um, and it, at four o'clock, we'll stop and we'll move on to the, the rest of the agenda. Okay. I'm going to bug out for a minute, return this phone call, but I'll be right back. Okay. So let's uh, skip over this because this is this is just part of the email. Let's go, so we don't need this part anymore because we're gonna go right to the to the survey, okay? okay? I'll keep scrolling and then you tell me when to stop, Bill. Okay, that's the end of that. So let's go to the next document. Okay. And by the way, hello everybody. I'm I'm here. Hi, Mr. Mark. Williams. It's hey. good to have you here. Hey, it's good to be here. No, no, not this one. This is the wrong. This is not right. This That's not, not the right, right survey. Okay. That's the wrong survey. It should be the 15 question survey dot three at the end. Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Give me a second, Phil. Um, okay. I can I can read them off a piece of paper while we're waiting for you. That's okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank. You. Okay. So there there's a new driver demographic section that asks basic things. Uh, there are eight of them here. Um, so I'll I'll read them off. Um, D1, D for driver demographics. Do you drive with Uber? Yes or no? And then if you click yes, it asks you lifetime number of rides. 
So that kind of addresses what Dan recommended in terms of getting a sense of how long. Oh, perfect. There is, that, is. is that something that, you know, being from the cab world where we never count rides, is that something that's common knowledge for drivers? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every, every day they tell you how many you've done every all during the week. They're letting you know what your weekly totals are. And then when you get paid, it's, it's part of your pay stub. It says how many rides, how many hours and minutes, and how many dollars you've earned. If, you, if you'd rather ask them uh, driving since and put in a date. No, I think I, if that's common knowledge and that's how the time is or, or uh, experience is quantified, then I'm fine with that. I, was just, I just wanted to make sure that that's the way it was in the TNC world. Okay. Um, and then it would be the same, the same. So D2 is the same two questions. Do you drive with Lyft? Yes or no? And if yes, lifetime number of rides. Um, you know, and for now you could put in parentheses or length in, in months or years, you know, if you want to get more input from Chad. Again, I'm, you know, I'm not going to die on a hill for either number of rides or length. Um, but that's just something to get a sense. I will, I will tell you from my position, I would kind of like to know years of service. And, and the reason why is, you know, you, you might have somebody that's been around since 2015 and has been through all the different changes, but might not, maybe they only do it one day a week. So their, their ride total isn't up there. Okay. Um, and, and I think that that's important to know because those individuals may be a lot more knowledgeable about what changes have happened and all that jazz over the, that time period. Okay. And, and again, you know, this should be the brainstorming stage where we're enlarging the number of questions. And then once we're done brainstorming, then you go back later and you pare down. So if you think it's an additional piece of information that's valuable to have, I would add it. So in addition to the lifetime number of rides, have something that says driving since. Yeah, um, I, think, I think that'd be great. All right, so whoever is, is, can someone be editing this or? Cameron is doing it right now. Okay. So that would be like, if yes, D1A and then D1B, and then if yes for lift, D2A, D2B, okay. Um, okay. Should I go on or should I wait for Camarina? Uh, keep going, Phil. Okay. So D3, do you consider yourself a full-time or part-time driver? Um, and then I, I just broke it into what I thought were three categories that clearly identify part-time, sort of full-time or working overtime. So zero to 30, 30 to 40, and over 40? I suggest um, a, a more choices. I think you should get down to, uh, I'm just throwing this out there as an idea. See if you got those folks that are just doing this four hours a week versus you know 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week. It'd be really nice to get a little bit more granular there. I'm yeah, fine I with would, that. I would agree with that as well. I'm fine with that. I think the really important thing for me was to have an over 40 hours because that's indicating yeah. the equivalent of overtime. So anyway, I'm okay. I'm okay with however you want to break those down. Um, D4, county of residence. I don't feel strongly about this, but it enables us to, if nothing else, identify the people who are commuting in from Washington. Um, I believe it was, was it Guy that had comments about coming in from one of the other counties? I don't know. I mean, if you're gonna be doing cross tabs on your data at, at, at a certain point, I don't know. Would, do you think there's information to be gleaned from where people are starting to work from? 
um, I, I, I don't think it, I mean, it really matters. I mean, I live in Columbia County and I always uh, start my day right here in my driveway and I turn on the app and I head down Highway 30 to Multnomah County and I usually get my first trip, like, you know, maybe in the St. John's area or, you know, Northwest Yeon or somewhere like that, you know? I think that was Chad that had um, added that in. And, and quite frankly, I, I think it, it can't hurt to have that. Okay. You know where they're, where they're from. Yeah. We, I mean, off the top of my head, I could think that maybe it affects a person's uh, feelings about long pickups, you know, if. Well, I think, I think Chad's point was basically like, if you're, if you're coming in from, from Multnomah Falls or something to get your first ride, as opposed to starting in downtown Portland, you're basically having a job that you're commuting to. Um, right. So I think that was kind of his, okay. his idea behind it. All right. You know, and again, we'll go through them now, but then everyone who's here today will be able to think about these things over the next two weeks. And, you know, you might have more thoughts next time. Uh, D5, do you uh, own or rent Bill? your vehicle? What? Bill, I just wanted to call your attention to the chat. Um, Mark wrote, ask for zip code instead. Oh, okay. And then that's a great idea. Okay. <laughs> well, someone's much more experienced at this than I am. <laughs> Mark, feel free just to throw it out there. <laughs> there was so much talking, I couldn't get a word in. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, number five do you own or rent your vehicle? Um, if, if you rent, from whom, Uber, Lyft, Hertz, or other. Uh, I, I think this is a, real, a really important question to ask because I, I've seen a very strong trend uh, of people renting. Um, it used to be renting cars from Lyft and Uber. And what I'm seeing now is a very strong trend uh, towards people renting Teslas from Hertz. Um, and I think by asking this question, we'll, we'll start to get a, a better idea of how popular it really is. And I think it'll perhaps start to affect questions that we may ask in subsequent surveys regarding um, what types of cars are being rented and the percentage of electric cars. And I think Hertz is gonna be a leader there until Uber and Lyft start renting them directly. And that will also affect profitability too. Um, hey, do they still have a system set up? I'm just, just curious. I know that at a period of time, Lyft would offer you a rental vehicle. And if you did so many rides in a week or whatever, you got that vehicle for no charge. Is that still going on? I, I believe it is. But when, when I was more aware of it, um, you would you would get the you know the discount or the free car, but you wouldn't be receiving the the weekly bonus that you would get if you had your own car. So in other words, if if it was three hundred dollars a week to rent a car and you did a hundred rides, they would give you the three hundred bucks off. But if you owned your own car and you did those same hundred rides, they might have given you more than a three hundred dollar bonus. So it was you know. And they pay less per mile too, correct? Uh, I don't want to be quoted on that, but you know, I, I'm very skeptical of, of everything that the TNCs do. You know, they're not <laughs> they're not giving you a bargain when they're renting you a car. But right? you know, that's it is a pathway to being employed, right? If you don't have a vehicle. Right, but not a very good one if you're only a part-time driver. So you really have to be. If you're paying a certain amount for the car, it kind of forces you to work more and more, right? Because there's a flat fee that you have to go over before you've paid off your, your fixed expense. 
Yeah. All right. You know, I, well, I'll, I'll save my comment, but um, okay. So, so we're asking where they rent their car from. And at this point, we're just getting a yes or no on that. And again, these are things we're going to be able to use later, you know, to, to slice and dice the data. So you'd be, you'll see if there's different types of responses from people who own versus rent. Okay. Uh, D6, D7, and D8 are all asking what types of rides uh, the drivers qualify for. So if, if I don't have the terminology right for some of the Uber ones, feel free to correct me, but D6 is, does your car qualify premier comfort or Lux rides, right? With premier comfort being Uber and Lux being um, Lyft. And those are all like the higher paying ones. D7, does your car qualify for XL rides, meaning more than four passengers, which I think is the same term for Lyft and Uber. And then D8, does your car qualify for green reduced emissions or zero emission rides? And that'll be interesting to cross check or cross tabulate later when we see some of the questions that relate to those types of rides. So some of the things that we didn't ask in driver demographics, um, I think, well, I think you get into trouble, right? If you start asking age or gender, um, I don't know. Did I miss anything here that anyone, and again, we're brainstorming. So don't be shy if you're, if you say, hey, I, I wonder what the effect of such and such has. I've got a question for you. Sure. I'd be curious to find out how many drivers carry the ride share rider on their insurance. I'd be curious about that as well. That's a great question. Don't you have to? No. No. Your insurance company may say you have to, but it's not required by law. Oh, okay. Add it. Capture that in the notes. D9. Anybody have any anything else? <laughs> Do you carry a handgun? <laughs> no, sorry. I'll I'll give you some language, uh, Camarina. Great, thanks, Do we agree we should not ask age? Uh, I don't know that it matters. Okay. No, I I don't think we need. That's. Um, I don't think we need to ask age. I don't. No, I, I don't think we should ask for age. I think that could be some discriminatory thing. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I don't think you'd get in trouble for it, but it's just, it has, really has no bearing on what we're trying to find out. Okay. All right. Do we care? Uh, I mean, I'm just if we're trying to figure out how people are working. Do we care if if they drive during the day, during the night, weekends? Do we care about any of that? I mean, that might be helpful. I mean, yeah, things might be different time of the day. I, I mean, I normally work, you know, afternoon space shift to like midnight and as late as maybe two in the morning so maybe sure why not? Yeah. guy you're muffled he can't hear you well i understood him but he definitely sounded like he swallowed his phone there for a minute no i, I, I is that better no it's not it's worse okay how is this is this better yes okay well i I think it might be a good idea if we ask what type of time they go out 
I think that would be a good idea. So something like, do you typically work uh, the same shifts or the same days? I, I would maybe put it this way. Um, like uh, what, what is your normal shift and put weekdays, weeknights, weekends, and, and let them choose multiples or, you know, what okay. I mean, would that, does that make sense? Sure. Multiple choice. Yeah. And you know, I mean, they can, they can choose all of them. They can choose one of them. Please check the times of day you drive most often. Well, and I'd also be curious if they would answer how many hours a day they work. Well, we're asking them the hours in, in number three. That's per week. You want to ask them per day also? Well, I'm, I would be curious about per, you know, what what's their daily shift like? You know, you can have a 40 plus hour week, but if that means they're working 12 hours a day every single day, then then that something's not right with that. You know, why is you know nobody should have to work 80 hours a week. If that's what they're having to do to make ends meet, then that's information that would be helpful to know. So, you, do you, does anybody agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be good information. Yes. So, just to clarify, um, are you suggesting under D three where it asks? you know, we're going to have the zero to 10 hours per week, 10 to 10 to 20. Would, would, would you have a question underneath that says on a daily basis, how many hours per day do you typically work? Yeah. I mean, not... On average, how many hours a day do you work? Okay. And then beneath that number of days per week. So kind of group those three questions together. Yes. All right, Camarina, so that becomes D3, D4, and D5, and then everything else moves move down a number? Mm -hmm. Yes. Camarina, you're doing a great job, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I will um, put all this together and send out another version. So we might not be captured right now, but it will be when you it hits your inbox. I appreciate it. Okay. And so, so it's interesting. We spent almost the full 20, 25 minutes on the driver demographics. And I think that's great because, you know, we made, we made some good changes. Um, why don't we take the next three minutes and or five minutes and let's just focus on the very first three questions. And that'll probably be a very good, good time to stop. Um, number one and two are straightforward and clear. And then number three is going to be where we jump to the op, the first set of opt-in questions. And that'll just give you a taste of what we'll be discussing next time in more detail. Now we, we agreed on the first three questions or didn't we agree on these already in the last meeting? And we were going to the, what the additions were under three. Yeah. So so then why don't we just take a look at the additional questions? Okay. Um, so you want me to jump to 3A1? Yes. Okay. Here we go, Opting Okay. questions. So again, just to remind everybody, this whole section is about what the drivers think they know <laughs> about how the rider fare is calculated. Okay, so there's gonna be a whole bunch of different factors that may or may not affect rider fare. Okay, and the order, I just tried to put them haphazardly so that they're not in a leading way. So 3A1, do you believe that the time of day affects the rider fare calculation, yes or no? And then the follow-up to that is I clearly understand how the time of day affects the rider fare calculation and that's on a one to five scale. Okay. All right. 
and then you know, should I just read these off as we go, or does everyone want to read them? Uh, go, the go for it. Go ahead. Okay. So 3B, do you believe that the estimated time and distance of the ride affects the rider fare calculation? Certainly used to, right? It might not anymore, but it'll be interesting to see what the driver thinks about this. And then... So, so when you say that, so the estimated time and distance... So, say so you're ordering an Uber. Uber says, "Okay, that's three miles," and that's well, no, know. they don't tell you it's three miles. But but this is what Uber's doing. So Uber's algorithms are saying it's three miles. It's going to take you 15 minutes to get three miles. So this is how much the cost is going to be. Is that basically that's what it used to be? I don't know if they're doing that anymore. Okay. All right, go for it. Keep going. Okay. And then we move on to C. Do you believe that the number of riders affects the rider fare? Um, I don't think that's the case, but no one really knows for sure, right? But again, this will just get a sense of what things are crystal clear to drivers uh, versus where there might be some differences of, of opinion. Um, so the fact that, you know, as an experienced driver, we might say the number of riders doesn't affect anything. For all we know, that may, may not be true, um, but it'll be interesting to see what, how many of the drivers think that it does. And uh, Camarina, just for uh, just for flow sake, I don't think there should be an S on the word effect. Okay. Am I right with that? Yes. Well, this these things affect. You're right. Okay. Um, number of riders, the actual time and distance of the ride, that's 3D, right? The one up above in 3B was the estimated time and distance of the ride, right? This is all in advance. So 3D is the actual time and distance. So we're asking the driver, you know, if you make a wrong turn or if it takes you longer, do you think what the rider is gonna pay changes? At one point it did, it might not anymore. So that's 3D, 3E. Do you believe that rider and or driver ratings affect the rider fare calculation? Okay, three. And I'm just skipping over the, the follow-up one, which is just, do you believe, right? Or, or I clearly understand, I'm, I'm skipping those parts. Um, so 3F, I can't read while it's moving. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do you believe that the pickup location, neighborhood, zip code, or my more precise location affects the rider fare calculation? I've had riders tell me that if they walk across the parking lot, the rate changes. You know, so this is asking what drivers think of that. The next one is drop off location. 3H has to do with um, estimated time and distance for the driver to arrive at the pickup location. Um, that has to do, this, this will address later on long pickups, which everyone should, if they're not already aware, Uber pays something for long pickups, uh, Lyft doesn't. And when I've asked them in person, uh, their response is, well, uh, there's a shortage of drivers now, so we're keeping everybody busy, and that's why um, there's a lot more long pickups, and we'll address that later. But it's been, you know, three years, and they haven't addressed it. And it's actually one of the reasons why I'm pretty much stopping driving for Lyft. Um, it's because they're not paying for long pickups, and most of their rides have long pickups. Anyway, so that's three. So, so really quickly, uh, two things. One... Um, when you're saying long pickups, that means you have to drive further than normal to pick up the rider. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then um, secondly, uh, let's get down to 3H. We're at four o'clock right now. Okay. Um, and then uh, wrap this part up and then we'll bounce. Okay. Back. So let's let's see. HIJ. I'm not sure how many there are, but you guys can read these, you know, 
on, on your own. And you know, this this gets to a lot of the stuff Dan was talking about, about things we get paid on. So pickup fees, surge pricing, airport fees, and or up charges. We don't, as drivers, we don't know <laughs> if any of these things affect what the rider is paying or how, how it affects what they're paying. Gotcha. All right, so if you slide up to the bottom, just let me know if anything jumps off. Okay, and then, and then six is gonna be all the exact same questions that were in three. It's the exact same uh, factors, but now instead of how it affects what the rider is paying is how it affects driver compensation. And again, these will only come up if, if the person filling out the survey says, yes, I'm willing to answer some more questions. Gotcha. All right. So, you know, especially uh, Dan and, and Guy, you know, please, please look at this stuff, you know, between now and, and next time. And, you know. I will. I'll look sh at it. Share, hopefully, some of these things you'll be enthusiastic about. Like, wow, I really can't wait to see, you know, whatever. And if you can come up with other ones, that would be that would be great. You know, again, we're we're brainstorming before we whittle it down. Perfect. Okay. So are we good for that for now? Uh, Camarina, do you want to go back to our agenda and um, <clears throat> we'll go back to number thirteen and ask Mark Williams if he uh, completed his task. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Yes. Uh, Mark, we were hoping that you could explain more your discovery on action item 13. What was action item 13? When you put on the speakers, then you have to take the... Um, what is that? Okay. Uh, your response is right oh. here. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this had something to do with the question around um, when they implemented this minimum compensation. I think I made a comment, and that's why this turned into an action item. Did this affect the number of drivers that were allowed on the platform? And um, I learned that it did not in Seattle. But it did on, it New, in New York because they had some sort of program in place that uh, provided an incentive to companies to keep drivers busy. So in order to do that, they reduced the number of drivers that they would allow access to the platform. As a result, the remaining drivers were consistently busy. So it was really kind of their way of balancing the supply and demand so that the drivers that were working were always busy. Now, Seattle says that they are not aware of that happening there, um, but the colleague I spoke to up there, he said, I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing it, if Uber and Lyft are doing that, we don't know about it. Yes. Um, if they're doing that, it, it's really, <laughs> it's so rife for corruption. Um, because you don't know what criteria they're using for letting you on the platform. Just like now, we don't know what criteria they're using for keeping us busy or not, right? I, we all assume that whoever was closest would get pinged, and that's not um, the case anymore. You're, I think you're absolutely right. You, we, we don't know if they're doing it, and I don't know if you've heard any reports from drivers you know, saying, hey, I couldn't get on the platform right now. We have a driver shortage, so I don't think it's an issue right now. But let's say um, that the city attorney comes back and says, because right now the city attorney is exploring the question, 
does the city of Portland have the authority or are they preempted from establishing a minimum compensation policy? That question is still unclear and it's unanswered, but we have attorneys looking into that question. Um, but let's say they come back and say, hey, city of Portland can establish a minimum compensation. And let's say the city decides to do that. Well, Uber and Lyft, in response to that, in my opinion, are going to make sure that we're not paying a bunch of drivers to drive around in period one, <laughs> right? right. Um, they're gonna make sure that every driver out there is yielding some sort of revenue for the company. So if and when that time comes, um, that might be something that the committee may wanna discuss is, are you or do you plan to limit the number of drivers on the platform and how will you do that? So that would be that would be horrible because they're they're claiming we're independent contractors and everything is set up that way and they can't tell me that I can't go on the platform. Well, want to work? Well, that that that's a little bit more complicated feel and and I think that that would, I mean, I, I guess I would defer you to the terms of service. I don't know what they say, but. Um, I mean, if they they turn off drivers all the time, let me put it that way. Um, drivers get turned off for too many complaints. Uh, drivers get turned off, you know, uh, probably for too many passes. Uh, so I've heard. They already do that now. They, you know, limit, or I shouldn't say limit, but they dictate which drivers can access the platform. So. I don't know what that means if a law like this passed and we were paying or requiring a minimum compensation. I don't know if the city would have a say so in that respect. So just because they're doing it now doesn't mean they should be allowed to continue doing it, let alone do it in another uh, situation. Um, you know, at, at some point, I'd like to see this committee address the entire issue of being deactivated for acceptance rates. Yeah. I mean, that's why we have the ombuds process, right? And anyone that's deactivated um, for a reason that is unrelated to state law or city code um, is referred to the ombuds person, Sally, and she investigates those claims, if you will, uh, with Uber and Lyft. And go ahead. so, Mark, could could mm -hmm. we be proactive as a subcommittee and bring bring recommendations to our government officials on behalf of the drivers to protect them against this unfair policy of deactivating drivers for lack of acceptance rate? We don't have to sit here and argue among ourselves that acceptance rates should be at the discretion of drivers. Do, do they still currently do that? I, I know I lose benefits that, that I've earned by not accepting a certain percentage on Lyft. Absolutely. So I have a um, couple, couple things here on acceptance rates. Um, I accept every single ride that comes on my screen. Okay. In fact, on Lyft, it, I, I, I have it set up where it just automatically um, accepts everything. I, I, I accept everything. So I don't, and, and I do well on these different trips. Financially, I do really well. So I don't understand, and I, I've never understood this, why someone would pass up a trip. I don't, I don't, I don't see why. Be because sometimes you're asked to drive 29 minutes for a ride that's going to go three minutes. As a platinum driver, right, I've earned the right to see the uh, distance and direction of a ride before I accept it. So, I, so if I see a ride pop up that's 29 minutes away um, and I, I have to drive from Vancouver you know, you name it, to Wilsonville to pick someone up who's staying in Wilsonville. And I'm going to earn $3.75. As an independent contractor, I deserve the right to pick and choose which rides I want to use. I'm well, not concerned. In that, in that scenario, 
from Vancouver to Wilsonville. Um, two things here. One, I've never seen that happen. You That's know what? Now, kind of now you're not. No, look, your personal experience has nothing to do with what other thousands of people have the right to choose which rides they want to take or not. So I, here's what I would say to you, Phil, is that that in some way would contradict city code, right? Because the city council was very concerned about equity. And once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a claim that drivers were denying rides, if you will, canceling rides in neighbor or in neighborhoods that, um, you know, that were majority, uh, you know, occupied by persons of color, right? And so there's a requirement in city code that you've got to accept every single ride. Now, do we go back and look at the ride data and enforce that, you know, 100%? No, but we are complaint driven. And if we hear about that, we would investigate that. So in my opinion, I don't think that a policy that allows drivers to decide which rides they want to take would successfully get through council or just because yeah. of that concern. You know, the, if I could interject too, what I hear when I hear ride benefits or, or uh, incentives um, for acceptance, that to me seems like it's an incentive to accept rides it's not preventing you from not taking rides but if you do take every ride then you then you gain something from that and it's more of a, a self-inflicted benefit <laughs> let's put it that way rather than you being kept down by not accepting i i understand what you're saying phil um so let me let me give you the example and this is also what led me to to stop driving for lyft um There are, there are times at night where there are no cars at the airport and you could be 20 minutes away. You could be in downtown Portland. You could be south of Portland and you'll get pinged from the airport and it's 20 minutes away and you don't want to drive there to go get them. So you hit reject and you immediately get pinged again by another airport ride and you hit reject and you hit reject 8, 10, 12 times in a row. And boom, within like, and you, there's no time in between requests. These are rapid fire. There's no time to turn your phone off. They keep pinging. And then when you turn your phone back on, they still keep pinging because you haven't logged out of your, out of your Lyft app. And that, and that causes you to lose that benefit of seeing the distance that your subsequent rides are gonna go. One then, thing you can do on the Lyft app is you could put press the last ride button and then you won't get any more rides if you don't want to go out to the airport and then i mean but there's there's so, literally no, yes there's no time to get to it but what well, i no was, no there is you could you could press last ride on the app there's a button did you know that it, of course it, i know that i've done, I've done over fifteen thousand rides okay well then i don't understand what the, because the, you the can't press is. it fast enough but what I would say to you is under city code, that's a punishable offense. So if that customer or those customers complain that I couldn't get a ride, we could mm -hmm. potentially investigate that, collect the data and tell Uber or Lyft, you failed to provide 24 hour service. Now in return, you know what they're gonna do? Well, we gotta get rid of these drivers that are costing us $1,500 fine, $1, fines because they're rejecting rides. I would no, imagine- No, what they need to do is provide happen. an incentive to go to whatever areas they want us to go to. You put a little $2 bubble over whatever neighborhood they want us to go to for whatever reason. It could, well, it could be because an event just let out or it, because, or it could be because no one is driving around that area. Well, I, I agree with you. Those are lots of things that they probably could do to provide an incentive to drivers. I'm just saying what, you know, what Portland City Code requires is that they provide 24-hour service. This happens all the time with, with wheelchair accessible service, and, and, and Darren could attest to this. We don't care where that wheelchair vehicle has to come from. We expect you to get there, and we want you to get there within 30 minutes. That's what the code requires. Um, All right. and, and you don't care rides. Where I've never, going. I've never denied a ride because it's in a bad neighborhood. 
I know you haven't, but people have. So then, so then they, so the TNCs should be able to identify who those people are that are rejecting rides from certain, whatever they are, zip codes. And there should be, there should be an allowance. Why don't they just not count it as a, as a rejected ride if the pickup is more than a certain number of minutes or miles away? That's a wonderful solution, isn't it? Um, I think you it's... Know, um, hey, can I say something here? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. See, the thing that you're forgetting, <clears throat> going back to what I said in the beginning of the average life of an Uber driver is 90 days. You have to, you have to be clear that you as a driver are totally disposable. Today, there's five, six, 10, 15, 20 guys signing up to be Uber drivers. There's five, 10, 15, 20 drivers dropping off the platform. So what, so that's the way things are, but what's the point? So what about that? So I shouldn't, I shouldn't so, be looking so out point, for long-term so, so drivers? So the point is, is that Uber doesn't have to provide the stuff that you're asking them to provide for an order for them to sign up drivers. What, what will change with, what will make Uber change is when they can't sign up drivers. And as of right now, they can sign up drivers. So again, you got to pick your battles. is not to accept the fact that, that- You got to pick your battles, Phil. You got to pick your battles, bud. Well, that's the you point know? of this whole committee is to identify the various battles that will be fought. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, there's city code that goes in, in, in with this too. And so- How does we, it affect city as, code as a, you know, if, we, driver, if we were to recommend that, that, that rides rejected because they were a certain distance away shouldn't count towards your acceptance rate? How would that Darren follow? Campbell? Darren Campbell? Yeah. Darren? Yeah. What happens if, if I'm a cab driver and I reject 25 rides in a day? If I reject grocery stores, little old ladies, and I only go to airport trips. <laughs> what happens when I do that? But that's not what I'm, what I'm, I just, the same I just thing, said. It's, 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 it's the same thing though, Phil. Tell, no, tell it me, isn't. Darren, what happens? It's completely different because it's not profitable to drive 20 miles to go get somebody. Correct. Phil, exactly. I'm going to, Phil, I'm going to ask exactly. you to um, let Darren answer the question that Dan Well, the, the, the easy answer is you're, you're more than likely you're going to get deactivated and brought in and you're going to get a, a talking to and and you're probably going to lose some opportunities and in the cab world opportunities are being able to take uh uh you know regular um account trips that are a lot more profitable um so i mean there's there's a punishment there and 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 they, you know, cab drivers are independent contractors, but in the independent contractor model, there's there's a series of questions and you have to be at something like 65% yes on those questions. So it's not a all or nothing when it comes to independent contractor status. Um, so there's things that, that, yeah, you can say, I'm an independent contractor, they can't, they can't do this, but that's not necessarily the case. So you, as an Uber driver or a Lyft driver, accept uh, the, the uh, terms of service under which you're to operate, and, and therefore, you've got to play by those rules. Oh, can I respond now? Yeah. What a ridiculous question to phrase it. I can't, what if I, what happens to a driver who rejects 25 rides a day? Why would you put such a ridiculous number on it? And that- it happens. It not absolutely by, happens. Not by me. If I want well, to reject well, me. But Phil, let me, to be honest, the, the, you know. He's exaggerating the question to get the answer that he wants. And not in the cab world. But I'm, I'm phrasing my recommendation in no, the I get, I get world. You. I get you. I get you. And it, it, it makes it frustrating if, if I can't raise questions that affect Lyft and Uber with having exaggerated examples from the taxi world. Never so, did I say I don't want to go to a bad neighborhood. Def never did I say I don't want to do supermarket pickups. And then never so, did I say I want to reject 25 rides in a day. Yeah, so Phil, well, in a, what, in what it boils down to is- It's a very a unfair guys, way to argue. So Phil, what it boils down to is a lot of these guys will only take rides if they're within five minutes away from them. 
You're putting a number five. I'm leaving the number off. Right. There's, I there's understand. a number but, but, somewhere that right. would be agreeable. Right. There's, but guys will only, guys set a limit on the amount that they will travel to right. pick up. Right. So, so you negotiate something that's somewhere in the middle and you present it to Lyft. Or Uber is already compensating <clears throat> drivers for going over a certain amount of minutes. Can you guys hear me here? Yep. Can hear you, guy. No. Uh, no. You're you're breaking I, up, guy. Uh, I I just um. How, how do I sound now? Do I sound better now? Yeah, you sound good. We can hear you. I really don't care where they send me and how far they 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 send me and I because. You take the good with the bad on all trips. And at the end of the night, I make good money and I go home. And you so manage I your business ask, however you want. Phil, um, okay. I'm going to ask you to please not interrupt. Um, thank you. Well, how, I mean, usually all the time when you're, when you're going from like downtown to the airport, it's surging, um, you know, at least five or six bucks out so you're gonna get an extra five or six bucks on the ride okay no but okay but then it's the human aspect so i go out to the airport last night um surging and i went downtown to the airport and i picked up this couple and it's a good ride and they were very appreciative like wow thanks for coming to get us it was really hard to get an uber and lyft and we really appreciate it and so how would you feel, Phil, if you were out at the airport and you couldn't get a ride because, ah, oh, that's too far. I don't want to do it. Now I'm going to stay down here. How would you feel if you're out there in the rain and the cold at the airport? And that's the case. Phil? I'm asking a question. I'm not going to respond to that. That's, your per that's a personal experience for one okay, so ride that you had in the night. Then I go out. And you're you're then telling me that the you're airport. telling me that every time I get and I, and I am picking, to go to the airport, and I, and I, guys, a five or six dollar bonus. And there is uh, We have five minutes, and Mark has his hand raised. Mark, I, I would one comment and one suggestion. So what I would suggest, Phil, is uh, maybe doing some research and see if you can come up with a market where Uber and Lyft have a very similar policy to what you're describing, where drivers are allowed to cancel or reject rides when the pickup location is beyond a certain mileage. It'd be nice to see if that policy existed anywhere. Um, my comment is, um, uh, similarly, we have sometimes cab drivers at the airport that have waited in line. And of course, this is all pre-pandemic when they did wait in line for a long time. And then when it was their turn to pick up a passenger and they find out that they're just going over to Cascade Station, they would go, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, you jump in the next cab. They were trying to give the short ride to the other driver because it didn't yield a bunch of revenue. We have cited those drivers for that conduct um, because they basically refused a ride, even though it was kind of on the front end when they were at the airport. So in my opinion, this is a very tough policy to push through city council. Um, but if you can come up with a similar market that has a policy in place, um, I think you'll have a better chance of getting somebody to look at it. Right now, Uber pays for long pickups and Lyft doesn't. Right, but city council is not going to be interested in something that affects one company and not the other, and there's only one driver complaining about it. So um, that's they're not going to change this rule for a handful of drivers. But if you had and you could demonstrate that 90% of the drivers have this concern, you might get some attention there. But again, we're dabbling in independent contractor policies with the company that they operate for. And that's just not always something that they like to get involved in, in my opinion. Right. And you know what? I, I apologize. Um, this whole conversation didn't start off about long rides, right? What it, it started off on some other topic that had to do with limiting the uh, number of people on the platform. Right. Right. And, and 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 I really apologize for getting us, you know, off topic on that. Darren's fault. But that's that. But what it really came down to as an independent oh, contractor, they shouldn't be allowed to tell 
they're going to use criteria and that's a slippery slope. What criteria are they using for keeping, is it first come first serve? But back, back, to what I was, back to what I said earlier, Phil, if you agree to it as an independent contractor, which you probably did in whatever terms of service they put in front of you and you, you say yes to, then they can do, they can tell you what to do and what not to do. It's part of you as a, as a, independent contractor agreeing, agreeing to use their service to, to garner rides. Does that make sense? Yeah. I now, now, if the state of Oregon comes in and says, well, these drivers qualify as, as this type of, you know, right now, I know there's a concerted effort to try and figure out a in-between independent contractor and employee uh, uh, status of, of, of worker. Um, but that hasn't happened yet. Um, but until that happens, then you're, you're going to be kind of stuck with whatever the terms of service are. Yeah. And the only thing that's going to change that is either massive, like Mark said, massive outcry from the drivers or the public perception that, that Uber and Lyft is not treating the drivers correctly. And therefore they get so much pressure that they have to do something differently. Even the Washington minimum compensation uh, requirement doesn't take into account how far the driver drives in period one. All right, so we're at 4.29 p.m. Um, so let's, uh, let's... Let's go home. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> uh, let's shut this down. I, you know, we were going to bring up one last thing. I'm going to throw it out just to so that people can think about it for next time. Um, uh, I think that we should make a recommendation in regards to third party rides. And this kind of goes back to safety. Um, I've seen a lot of issues with third party rides. And what I mean by that is, you know, Joe Blow bartender, you know, orders a, orders a car for the guy at the end of the bar who's hammered and lost his phone or broke his phone or something. And you pull up and it's not who's on the app but you end up taking them anyway. And I've seen a couple instances across the country where there's sexual assaults through that kind of thing. Um, and there's multiple different things. And, and one of the solutions to that is having a third party button on the app um, and providing a picture of that individual. Uh, and then therefore you know that one, it's a third party app and who you're supposed to be taking and you have some identifiers there. So. I just wanted to throw that out to you that maybe it's something that this committee can expedite up to the, to the big committees. Um, and, and it would also cover Phil's uh, idea of kind of seeing what the process is from the subcommittee to the main committees and how that flow is gonna go and how that conversation will go. Um, I think, it, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, uh, Darren, I just, gotta, I just gotta say this real quick. That's a great idea. That, and we'll we'll talk next time. That's a great idea. I love that idea. All right, perfect. So with that being said, we'll talk about that next time, Camarina. If there's any way you can kind of make a note of that to put that on the agenda for next time, yes, uh, that will would you be terrific. Will you submit a topic submission form? I absolutely will. Um, okay. I'm not sure how to do that to the subcommittee, but Mark will probably figure it out. Yep. All right. Thank you everybody Great. for a Thank wonderful, you, robust conversation today. And I will look forward to seeing, you. I think we meet in two weeks. Is that correct? Yes. All right. All right, everybody be safe out there, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.